So diet is one of the most important parts of having a happy, healthy hamster. So that's why it's important to have a high quality and high variety hamster food for your hamster. A lot of people think you can just walk into the pet store, pick the cheapest seed mix, and then feed it to your hamster and that's it. But a hamster's diet is a little bit more complicated than that. Hamster diets can be pretty confusing because there is not one sole hamster mix sold in the pet store that is going to meet all of a hamster's nutritional needs. Oftentimes, hamster owners are going to have to mix more than one mix together to get the proper amounts that a hamster needs. So here are a couple of things that you should know about hamsters. Hamsters are omnivores. They've been found in the wild to eat a lot of different insects as well as they've even been found to eat other small mammals. Hamsters are not herbivores like a lot of people think. If they're just fed a herbivore diet, they will slowly die from malnutrition. Um, pellets and things like the Oxbow brand, which I love the Oxbow brand for any other species of animal, just not for hamsters because the main part of that mix is hay, which hamsters don't need in their diet. Seeds are good for hamsters. There's a lot of myths that surround seeds. A lot of people think that seeds are like candy to hamsters. They really aren't. Seeds provide a lot of variety for your hamster, as well as seeds are actually fairly low in fat and sugar. So it's not really like candy. If you take a look at something like barley, it actually has quite low fat and low sugar content per 100 grams. So because of that myth, a lot of people just feed their hamsters pellets as well as a lot of people will recommend feeding pellets so that their hamster can't become a picky eater. But this then gives your hamster a lack of variety, which is really important in their diet. That's like if you were only to eat crackers the rest of your life, you would be very bored of that and it would not be very fun to eat the same thing over and over. So variety is really important. There's a lot of different ways that you can get around with not having your hamster become a picky eater, such as you can not refill the dish until everything has been eaten from the dish, or you can try to find a seed mix that doesn't just contain a ton of junk foods. Try to find one that has a less amount of those fattier foods in it. So when it comes to picking a good hamster mix, you're going to want to try to find something with 17 to 19% protein, 4 to 7% fat, and 6 to 15% fiber. You're also going to want to pick something with a lot of variety. Now, you're probably not going to find a sole mix in the pet store that is going to meet all of those requirements. You're most likely going to have to end up mixing a couple of different mixes. Now, what I recommend is because a lot of seed mixes generally have very low protein content, I recommend taking a high variety seed mix and I recommend mixing that with a high protein block diet. When you are mixing different hamster foods together, you really need to be careful. You can't just like mix three different mixes together. You kind of need to calculate it out because you can actually really mess up the overall nutritional value of it. And you don't want something that's too high in fat or too high in protein or too low in protein. So you're gonna wanna make sure you're going to be calculating right. I will leave a really great calculator that was made by one of the members on the hamster hideout forum so that you can figure out how much of each mix to combine together. As of right now, the most recommended mix on the market would be to take 50% of the Higgins Sunburst and 50% of the Missouri Rat and Mouse pellets and mix that together. I myself have actually researched quite a bit into homemade hamster diets and decided to create my own mix as well as mix in a little bit of commercial hamster seed mix. I don't talk about it a lot on my channel because it is important if someone wants to make their own homemade hamster diet, they do their own research and they learn how to properly calculate all of the nutritional values of each food. It also can be a very expensive process, so if you're on a low budget, you probably don't want to be making your own homemade food. If you're still interested in making a homemade diet, I will leave a good link that talks all about it. I myself have personally chosen to create my own hamster seed mix because there is no other mix on the market that looks like mine. I can provide as much variety as I want. I get to choose and select which seeds, which 
different types of foods I put in there as well as I can make the variety lots. I also know where each food is coming from because I'm purchasing it myself to put into my mix. Making my own hamster food doesn't necessarily mean that is better than a store-bought food. It is something that I'm always improving. My mix isn't 100% perfect, but it is something that you always are going to be improving and changing. Along with your hamster's regular daily mix, you also want to include fruits, vegetables, and other extras. These are really important because they have a lot of good nutrients and minerals for your hamster. Vegetables are super healthy. A lot of people seem to be against feeding them every single day because they say they're going to get diarrhea and they could die, which they won't. There is a certain way you can go about giving your hamster extra foods like fruits and vegetables and you shouldn't just give them an entire carrot stick. That of course would give your hamster an upset stomach. But if you're slowly introducing a new food to them every time and you slowly increase the amount, your hamster won't get an upset stomach. I also have a video that talks about safe and unsafe extra foods to feed your hamster, so I will leave that linked in the iCard above right here. And the last thing I want to talk about is herbs. This is something that not a lot of hamster owners in Canada and America really include into their hamster's diet because it might not be as available to us as it is other countries, but herbs are really great. They have a lot of good minerals as well as good properties to them. For example, the herb echinacea helps strengthen the immune system. Dill can actually help with an upset stomach and chamomile can actually help with indigestion as well as any respiratory diseases. So because herbs don't contain a ton of fats and sugars, there's not really a limit on how much you can give. I myself personally sprinkle a bunch in the cage once a week, but you could probably get away with giving a little bit more. One last thing that I want to touch on is extra mineral drops or mineral chews that you can get at the pet store that you drop into your hamster's water or you feed them to them. These are not necessary and they don't always help your hamster. Your hamster should be getting all of the nutrients and minerals from their daily diet, so these really just aren't necessary. So I really, really hope this video could help anybody who is confused on hamster diets because I know it can be such a confusing topic. And make sure you check out the description bar because I'm going to leave a bunch of links about things that I talked about in today's video. So yeah guys, thank you for watching. Bye!